Hey you guys, Chris here, and this is going to be a review on the Christoph Maduro Robusto cigar. As you may know from watching my videos, my auto focus doesn't work the best. And this is kind of hard to see since it's still in itself in. I'll show that better. But it's got the two bands, it's got a Christoph band and a Maduro band under it. Straight up, very hard smell of chocolate. <clears throat> this is a scar that RJ sent me, RJ the Smoker. You should find a link to his channel in the description. And in his letter, he sent me these for um, basically a Christmas present, and I sent him some stuff. He said, I got the big cigar from the USA. No, I got sent the big cigar from the USA. So the guy called Oscar bought it at Stogie's or Stoogie's Cigar Factory in Florida. www.stogiesmokeshop.com I've tried to go into that link, it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, I did a quick Google shop, uh, search and they've got a different kind of site basically. Uh, so yeah, just you might want to Google that one if you want to find the cigar. It's quite cheap there. And I think the cheapest way is there are some places in Europe that sell these. And for, I think it's about £6 each, but you have to buy them from Europe and you have to pay some extra shipping, whatever, so you got to be kind of um, wary about that. I'll show you that later. So let's get this out of the tube. Oh, uh, out of the cellophane. I sort of had a schedule on when I want to smoke cigars, I wanted to really cut down. And I really wanted to review this. And looking at my schedule, I realized, you know, I've got to start smoking my Regis Coronas sometime soon. And then I've got other scars I want to, and I know I would just never get around to this, and this is what I really want to look forward to. So now the cell phone's off, we could have a look at this. I am not familiar with Christoph Brand. I mean, it's not as if I haven't heard of them. It's more that I've never had one before. As you see, they're kind of, um, I feel like uh, fabric kind of brands. Or at least a type of more cardboard-like paper. It doesn't look like I take these off so easily. In terms of veins, not really much to speak of. There's a little bit. Very well put together, I'd say. The seams are very, very, very tight. So a little bit of a lip, I guess. smells very nice. See the uh, package. It's got a very uh, chocolatey type of hint to it. This is, that may just be that they've been stored with the other scars or the coffee scars one not. This is a very interesting smelling cigar though. It's very hard to describe. I'll think of that in a second. As you see it's a, let's just see this up close, a pigtailed end. Also the um, ball plug. Also the foot is very rough and pigtailed sort of. Very um, sort of a deep smell. I'll be smoking this with some QC sherry, which is very cheap. I don't really like sherry. Um, I mean, I like sherry, but I mean, sherry's okay. But I prefer port. This one very deep about this. It doesn't smell just like deep tobacco. Very deep baked flavor. Lots of chocolate, lots of earthiness in there. It reminds me a bit of the Inca Secret Blend, also a bit of the uh, a deep Monte Cristo sort of smell. It's uh, very hard to describe this one. Oops. So, let's get the cutter out. A lot of people like to cut a lot more off their scars than I do. I'm going to fault them for that, but I'm just saying I prefer this. Now that really decimated, uh, it would be kind of hard to show you, but the end of that really exploded into a lot of little pieces. Whoops. Didn't really stay together at all. 
I'm also a bit curious because uh, I'm pretty sure I cut off a bit more than that. So maybe the cap has gone somewhere else. Tobacco itself smells a bit more generic than you would expect from the wrapper. The wrapper is very, very, very nice. It just seems it's very firm. Tight compaction all the way around. And I could actually remove one of these bands. I have no idea what this is. It feels a bit halfway between fabric and halfway between cargo paper. Second band, the same. So um, these bands are quite interesting. They have the straight brand name, but they've also got a bit of intricate scroll work. Let's just see if we can get this. There we go. Okay, there we don't go. <laughs> yep, pretty impressive. Natural scar itself. Really impressive size wise. I don't have the exact size of this, I believe, up. Ring gauge 54, length about 14 centimeters. Um, that in inches is about five and a half inches. Actually, 13.97, that's pretty much exactly five and a half inches. It smells so fantastic. But got to focus really on that tobacco type smell. I say there is a hint of something plain in there. I don't quite know what to compare the inside tobacco to. Um, maybe one of the more generic bigger scars, maybe like the La Paz Gran Corona the type of basic Dutch and Holland tobaccos but we're gonna have to see draws pretty good considering the end is currently near capped off and as per usual I tend to forget to take the picture of it Luckily, I remembered in time. This is kind of a considerable problem when it comes to cigars. Because I tend to forget to take pictures of them. And then when it comes to setting a thumbnail, I end up with a real problem. So. Back to this. Never really had many Maduro cigars before. So I'm pretty ecstatic to see this one. And I'm pretty glad I said fuck my schedule to have this one. Just send a picture to our friends because uh, I didn't mention I would have that. Uh, I'm going to be a bit crazy here, try to light up a matches. Have you ever asked why I don't toast this cigar? I don't like butane lighters. I don't really like them. They're not fantastic. Toasting the cigar, if you light a cigar properly, you don't need to. Sort of an unnecessary, um, unnecessary step. Sort of adds a bit of complication when it comes to lighting cigars. If you light it properly, 
launches work fine. If there's a definition for a nutty tasting cigar, it would be this one. This is definitely towards one of the bigger scars I've had. Definitely not the, well, maybe, definitely not the longest, but width-wise, it's pretty big. I believe the longest I've had is a six and a half inch cigar, and the widest I've had is uh, ring gauge 60. But never together. I think this is um, near enough to both. Of course, this is something I am live streaming. I'm just trying to grind off a little bit of that extra ash on the end because of the whole hold it up end thing. As you can see, my autofocus isn't working. It's looking pretty nice. Huge in hills. There's a lot of little bits of uh, tobacco coming out of the end. I'm guessing that's probably to be bad cut. It's pretty smooth though. And we are back 10 seconds later. As you see, I've not progressed with this car. Um, sorry for a little bit of a cut. For some reason recording software just decided to cut out but the stream's working fine the video's working fine again so we're fine suspect veins aren't really sizzling or anything it's burning very 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 slowly If I get a whole lot more of these, I probably would. Of course, I'm making the assumption before the scar. I'm just saying for the uh, general smell of it, the size of it, if I could get a hold of these all the time, I probably would if they turn out to be a very good cigar. Or at least, you know, a decent cigar. I have a friend in Sweden, and he basically buy, can buy the very cheap European cigars and send them to the UK. By European, I mean, you know, any scars being really sold outside the UK in Europe is really, um, really cheap. Burn's not doing too bad, pretty even, so far. Not sure if you caught it, but suspect veins aren't sizzling still. Storming quite average around the middle. Cool with the plug. Very uh, very loose at the end, as you would expect. Initial draws. Initial intakes. Very very cool. I said quite an extreme nutty taste. Quite nutty, quite earthy. Seems to be about that. It's very um, generic ish. Generic. But well seasoned, definitely with the um, definitely some really good nutty textures and flavors in there. I 
As someone asked on the live stream, no, you shouldn't inhale cigars. I mean, with um, mini cigars, like very loose ones, you could inhale those, but there's no point. That sort of defeats the point of a cigar. You shouldn't be doing that with cigars. That's why scars aren't really that bad for you. I just love this. It's formed a nice um, sort of a uh, dome. If I could get any. Very nice. I'm pretty happy about the dark wrapper. The wrapper itself. Aside from the uh, veins and all the little bumps throughout, it's very smooth texture, nothing rough about it at all. Again, I just love the feel of this in the hand. Quite nice. Gonna post that on the uh, Cigar Hub Facebook page right now. Encourage people to enter the stream. It's very nice, very nice so far. Need to really help differentiate between the um, the wrapper and the actual tobacco. Of course, with it being Maduro, the wrapper itself is particularly different on its own and has its own sort of unique flavour. And that's probably that's probably where I'm getting most of the nutty texture in the inhale from or intake, and definitely a bit of the. Um, as I said, there's definitely some underlying type of Cuban in this. But I would say the tobacco itself, that might have that little bit of a Cuban mix, maybe. But it seems to be very generic, maybe like Dutch tobacco, that kind of tobacco, you know, the very generic stuff you get on that kind of um, areas in the world. Hold on to the ash, nice and well. It looks on there quite strong. Particularly an impressive cigar. Let's go to the Scar Hub Facebook page. Incidentally, if um, you ever want to know about where I'm doing my live streams or not, just, just like the Facebook page and I will post whenever I do one. I'll also, you know, explain it a bit, what not. Someone asked if we got a humidor yet? No, we don't have a proper humidor, I just mix between humidor bags and <coughs> humidor jars. So um, I basically have no <coughs> Jesus. How does that affect me? I have no set, you know, wooden humidor box. I just tend to use humidor bags, especially even put my uh, boxes of scars in humidor bags with the Boveda seasoning packets alongside more scars like this in sealed containers. Something usually humidor doors, but. In case I got these from and seal container, I just keep them in there. I threw in the Boveda pack. That should, you know, keep them fresh until I smoke them all. It 
if you're not keeping that many scars at once, you really don't need a humidor. I personally don't, because if you look at the prices of, of um, cigars in the UK, £50 for free shipping with cigars limited, that's really not that many cigars. So you can only, you know, it's good, you could have a few in at one time, and then when you want more, you could just order some more, since you could get them shipped to you pretty cheap, so. Let's just call this dash. I don't want a repeat of the um, Inca Secret Blend where I turned out to be quite bad at judging the strength of Ash and ended up with that on me. A few taps and that's off. A decent sized chunk. It's always good to see scars I've told their Ash. It's not good to see cameras I can't hold focus. From what I've understood, what a friend told me with this camera, it tends to focus on the face. If you can see a face in shots so that would cover my face, then you all benefit. We're only a little bit in the scar. Still exact same flavour. Very good. According to uh, someone in my live stream, Seagulls Limited do a newbie humidor set. So let's just have a look at that now. I would say humidor would be from here, I'm just not a big fan of humidors. Very basic looking humidor. Simple gauge. That's all you really need. Pretty basic box. Holds up to approximately 40 cigars, 26, 22, 10, 22. I like to hold most cigars lengthwise. Price wise, that's not too bad. I don't seem to be very fond of these cigars that it comes with though. We have a look here with the Henry Winterman Slims, those are very cheap type of cigars. I've had them before. Actually, I thought they discontinued those to do the Panatel. Oh no, they did the Panatels and then discontinued those to do the Slims. They're basically the same cigar. At least I hope that's right. Um, not fantastic. They're just the kind of normal cigar you would have. You wouldn't put those in the humidor. That's not really for that. Premium Tubal. Oh, that's Villager. Um, Villager make okay scars. I can't say I've had too many of their selections, but again, you're not exactly getting a big deal with that. That is the Luica Chubitos. It's a small Nicaraguan scar. I had one. It's not very good. Really overpriced. It's pretty shit. If you um, watch my latest video, then my um, Cigar of the Year video, you'll see I've got that on quite a low range. Now, some of these scars are a bit hard to discern. I can see on the right that's a Inca Secret Blend Rojo Red Très Petit Corona size by the look of it. Pretty overpriced cigar, you're not really getting your money's worth with that. I'm pretty sure that's a David Off Chico's cigar. I may be wrong about the size though. To the right of it. Just so you know, this is the Inca Secret Blend, this is the David Off Chico's I'm talking about. That's the Larica Villager Jupitos, anyone with Slims. And that's a Balmoral. I've I need to get a hold of Balmoral sometime, I just haven't really gotten around to getting one. Uh 
I guess that is actually a cigar worth the price. Or is that Balmoral? I don't know, I just think it is. Got that one wrong. I don't know, some of these cigars don't seem to be the um, best of the best, if you know what I mean. Some don't seem to be, uh, in terms of value, not the best. Probably wouldn't venture into that. To be honest, the amount of cigars is really not bad, considering you get the humidor as well. I mean, I'm thinking if you're looking for that kind of solution, then that's um, that's probably be what you're after. It's pretty nice. Me, it's not particular, not particularly anything fantastic. It's a nice old veneer. Actually, it looks quite good. I can't deny that. Oh, I was wrong about Chico's Ambassador Reese, the Curon Tres Petit Corona. That's actually not a bad cigar. Lou Martinez, uh, price wise, that's actually not too bad. La Invitica, La Invicta. I'm just going to take a bit of a limb since it's a Nicaraguan cigar, I'm going to avoid that. Shartan Panatel. I didn't even know they did a Panatel. Oh, so it is the Unicorn. I almost didn't recognise that. I would stay away from Shartan Skiors. They're quite expensive, they're in the quack and they're very bitter and not very good tasting in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so nothing too fantastic there. I know it's in the picture, they've got a scar cutter inside that box, inside the humidor, but I don't have to see that anywhere else. Um, it also comes with some uh, humidifying solution. Yeah, again, I would say if you're a beginner, that might actually be a good set. As for me, no. So, back to me with this cigar. Definitely power smoking this. It's currently just after 2 a.m. here. Just one of those nights, you know. Um, I still actually have, have some cigars I really need to get to. Um, so I'll have to get to those in their own sweet time. I have a feeling I'm going a bit too harsh on this. Let's give it a little bit of time to rest. When I say a little bit of time, I just mean maybe a bit longer than you would average you would take for an average puff, maybe maybe a minute and a half, two minutes maybe. Probably wouldn't extend much longer than that. Still burning very strong. And yes, I do have glass coke on standby. I'm pretty convinced this is kind of fabric. 
this is this is sort of debate saying to myself what is the band made out of not the actual cigar like Again, I'm still very happy with the size of the scar. It's burned quite, burned down quite a bit. So very nice. So I've ever seen to be on my phone uh, is cigar business, urgent cigar business. I'm explaining to a friend what cigars are like. Okay. Um, not what cigars are like, what Maduro cigars are like compared to normal. Place. It's probably something I should bring up here actually. Mature scars are a bit of a known category. Yeah, I'll spell on that. Um, the, as you could probably tell by obviously by the color of it. Let me just get um. Fuck it, I don't even know. It's probably not a good scar to compare it to. Is this a good comparison? Yeah, it is. This is quite a dark Cuban type of scar. It is the Romeo and Juliet Cedros Deluxe number three. Sorry. Made that noise in my mouth, by the way, don't be worried. As you can see, with this being kind of more than the Towards the darker side of Cuban scars, this is actually so insanely much darker. This is a bit over moistened actually, I need to um, sort that one out. It was actually in direct contact with the Boveda pack, so. Uh, this is more of an average colour. This is a cigar from Holland, uh, La Paz, Gran Corona. Very decent cigar. I'll review it at a later date. As you can see, it's so much darker. I said this scar is sort of hard to come across in the UK. It's um, not sold in the UK, but of course you have to import it from other countries. No idea what it is in the US, but I did explain earlier where I got it. In, well, um, where I got it and where you probably can get it. I was sort of more of be from that place, which is link would actually be in the description for that, so don't worry. Yeah, it's so bad to buy scars in the UK, the prices are just incredible. Second worst. Oh, that's what I was going to do, I was going to explain Maduro. It's not just the colour. It tends to lead people to believe that it's particularly spicy. It's not always the case. But Maduro scars tend to be a lot heavier baked. Tend to be a lot, lot spicier. Tends to be. Um, that's something I tend to avoid. Spiciness is often attributed to bitterness. I almost forgot to put the scar away for a second there. And of course, not many people are fond of the bitter scars because it's not really something you can sit down and enjoy too easily. Might as well finish off. Quite happy with this. 
again, neural plug, still very solid. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but there was a tiny little crunch. The wrapper seems to be getting quite brittle around the middle. Overall, I'd say it's quite a strong, firm wrapper. Although, I would say it's definitely more likely to um, break than bend, if you know what I mean. As I said, it's not always true that these are always darker, Maduro cigars. I mean, in general, the tobacco is darker than you would expect, but they're not always spicy. Sometimes they're just insanely good, and it's more of, instead of just big to be a bit stronger, more heavily, more heavy tobaccos, there's more, tends to be more flavor infused. That's what I'm getting in this case, definitely just insane, not the earthy flavor. Not too bitter, not too bad. Pretty happy with it. Especially for the price, this is very good for the price, I would say, so far. If you look at the time I smoked it, not long at all. Of course, I'm having to give it a bit of a rest. It does seem to have a bit of the extra bitterness in it, but nothing too special, nothing worth concerning. Still. Definitely a bit of sweetness in there. Deep and rich flavours anyway. Just gonna move this glass out of the way since I don't need it. If you're wondering what the hiss on this microphone is by the way, I managed to eliminate it using a digital audio converter, but those things are um, kind of expensive and I don't have one of my own. So um, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a piece of hardware that removes the hiss. <laughs> this is all I can really tell you if you don't understand. If you do understand, then a digital audio converter basically takes the, because that a digital to audio, digital to analog converter, my bad. Um, this is a, um, that's an XLR or whatever it's called, type of output, and that goes straight to 3.5 millimeter jack because um, that's not the cable I've got, it's not being converted from digital so it's been very badly recorded in the word begin with A, I've forgotten again, analog, so um, badly converted from analog to digital. I digital with audio converter between this and my computer, since, since it's just plugged straight into my computer. That would eliminate that, but that's too expensive and that's not something I really want to get into. It would cost about five times the price of this microphone, so. In case you haven't noticed, I tried a different lighting setup. This is partly because it's the middle of the night. It's 2.24. But also this camera is quite good at um, light exposure, so it should still be fine. Also, sorry if I look a bit rough. Because I kind of am. So, if anyone's watching the live stream has any questions, feel free to ask. Lots of smoke coming off of this, like insane amounts. I should be using a bigger ashtray, but let's just not. I actually have a manual focus. Um, the other focus is not brilliant. The manual focus is tends to be okay. Yep, there we go. Except the few initial bits of the starting, plugs not come apart at all. Very nice flavour on the palate.
whenever I do scores, I tend to give you a bit of an update, but there's really not much to update you on. I made my video, I believe, yesterday. And after that, I just played a few games on my computer. Then I went to sleep. And I woke up like sometime late in the afternoon, went on the computer. That's about it. Now I'm here. Um, If any of you know I play a lot of computer games and someone convinced me to do the nerdiest of the nerdiest thing, play the game World of Warcraft, which is, if you don't know, is the game that most sad nerds that spend all their time on the computers tend to play, eventually. Probably upset a couple of my fans doing that. But, um, yeah, I played it. I've been playing it for, I think I've had my, I bought a subscription for about £5. I bought the full game up to World of Draenor and I bought a month subscription to that and I'm level 90 already which is the max level up until World of Draenor after that's 100. So basically I complete this game and my total playtime is less than 24 hours or something. And I'm level 90 so I went from 1 to 90 so. Uh, Kind of a waste of time that game. In case you didn't know, half of what I do all day is just play games all day, but I tend to do a lot of my work on computer, I do a lot of stuff on computer. The one thing I can tell you that you're probably not interested in is furniture change. So, um, yeah. Not pertaining to this, but this explains the desk that I've gone to change. But I'm going to be changing that, which is a sofa bed, for another sofa bed because that's just an old piece of shit. I don't like it at all. It's really not good. It's a very unattractive sofa. It's very half beaten up, pretty much. And yeah, I'm just going to be getting. I'm just going to be replacing that with a better one. I'm just going to buy just some sofa bed from Tesco. And it's two hundred fifty pounds or something. It's extremely cheap. It's a fake leather type thing. It's light blue. Teal as they call it. Looks pretty nice. Very basic part on the sofa bed front, but very nice looking sofa. So I'm gonna be buying that. And since my um dad's having problems with his bed, we're gonna do some weird thing where he's gonna get put that sofa in his room to substitute his bed since his bed's pretty much fucked. And till we get around to buying him a double bed. Because I tend to pay for a lot of these things, you know, it's just my cut of living here. And once I get the new sofa, which is a little bit smaller, then I can move this cabinet a little bit further down. And I'm going to I'm going to try get an L-shaped desk. My desk right now is really cramped, and there's a big problem. Right under the desk, there's right at the back, well not quite at the back, there's like a baseboard, or like a support board. And that's really bad because I can't fit my computer under it and this takes up so much of my desk and it's really loud and I've had to actually take the main fan out which is not good for the heating of the PC so um, yeah it's kind of bad I want to be able to put that under so I'm gonna have to get a desk without quite that kind of baseboard or at least room for it at the back the desk I've got in mind is an L-shaped desk because I also intend to get three monitors eventually, and that would just be most practical for this size. And it's nearly as wide as this desk here. It goes, it'll go from here, sorry, hit the microphone. It'll go from here, and it'll curve around and come out to about here a bit. So, you know, I could have a monitor here, here, and maybe here, and stuff over here. I keep a lot of my scars just to my right here. I've said here about seven times in that sense, but let's just go with it. I don't like being a particularly wet smoker, but um, on this one I've gone a bit overkill. You probably can't see, I'll probably try and show you, the uh, wrapper's blistering up a bit. I guess it's just not too connected to the binder course under. 
but yeah, something worth mentioning under the heat, I guess, if you're interested to see how the wrapper is. I guess that's one of the things you'd want to consider. Oh, something bad just hit my tongue. A very, very bitter thing just hit my tongue. Doesn't taste like bitterness from over burning. I can imagine this scar lasting such a long time as you can see, still nearly full. You can't be the only person that hates the uh, Facebook Messenger app when it comes to taking pictures. Something I probably didn't mention um, in my update video over the Christmas and New Year period. Uh, two recommended DVDs. Um, HMV, which is, uh, they sell CDs and DVDs mainly. They've also got a headphone section in pretty much every store they have. And they had a two for £20 deal. Where, and the ones covered are basically live comedy shows on DVD. And the two I got were Kevin Bridges, because I love Kevin Bridges, really good Scottish comedian. Not like full on Scottish accent, but I mean, you know, very good. I would strongly recommend that to anyone, especially if you're Scottish, you will get the humour mostly. It's not like Frankie Boyle offensive, it's um, very good. You, I also got the Michael Magatar one, the most recent one. Well, the Kevin Bridges one was also the most recent one. Um, but the Michael Magatar one, his most recent one as well. I don't remember what it's called, but it was, that was very good as well. That's um, that's more family comedy, I guess. When did I start with the cigar? About 40 minutes ago when I'm halfway through. To be honest, this might be an hour and a half to two hours ago. Just checking the uh, times I posted a picture of it. Yes, I did just peel it off. Not trying to ruin the cigar. Just trying to look at the binder underneath. That's definitely a binder. Still relatively dry, nothing too moist in this. Keep in mind this is um I was sort of sealed in this packet when I got it. And I believe RJ told me that it's been sitting in a desk for a very long time. It's been sitting in his drawer or whatever for a long time. So I guess that's pretty fine. It's not too dry at all. So I guess these are, you know, decently seasoned for the packaged. Again, thank you RJ for sending me those. I'm pretty happy with all of them. I haven't tried most of them before. I haven't tried any of them before, but I did have an Amigo the other day in one of my uh, Scar of the Year video. Uh, because he's you know, sent four of those, I might as well try one and see what they're like, so help me with the review. And that was very good. So, um, yeah, thank you for all these RJ. They're all very good. From what I understand, the ones I haven't tried are the ones I've wanted to try, so thank you. Just doing some quick um, thinking in my head. I believe this would be the second largest cigar I've had. First being the Charlton Tube Churchill. I believe that would be a 50 
yeah, I believe that, that would be towards the... Oh no, that could have been a 54 ring gauge as well. Um, it certainly feels the same. But lengthwise, what was the original length of this? Figure. To be honest, lengthwise, this is only an inch shorter than this. This was a 15 pound cigar, this is a 5 pound cigar. This was a very bitter Nicaraguan. I was struggling to justify, if you saw my review, you would know I was struggling to justify the price of this. Um, I think you could get that for about 11, 12 pounds. I bought it for 15 because it was from shop. Bitterness has gone away, still very nice taste. It's a very consistent cigar. I'm just going to quickly check to see if that pigtail ended up on the floor. It definitely looked like didn't look like it ended up in the ashtray. Never looked for it. God, I need to get the hoover. Um, nope, no sign of it. And the focus just decided to go crazy for a second. Definitely going to try to leave a bit of a bigger ash on this. There seems so much of this to burn. In the meantime, how about you join me doing a bit of research on the Christoph brand? Dominican Republic, first thing to see. Dominican Republic scars, this is something just straight from experience. They tend to be very hit and miss. Um, by that, I mean, I don't mean they're all going to be bad or good. Of course, there's still all the other factors, price, you know, specific flavor, specific brands you've got to consider. But what I mean is, in terms of bitterness and harshness of tobacco, they can be bad very bad for that but you could also get some very nice sweet ones it's pretty much an even mix you don't really know what you're going to get this one seems to be towards a gooder market it's um definitely with the material there's a little bit a uh, bit of uh, a little bit of spice in this and a little bit towards the um a little bit of the heavy side but I think if you um, smoke at an average pace, one not, it's going to turn out quite quite nice. It competes with Arturo Fuente. There are a lot of Arturo and um, good Arturo cigars. I've never understood David off. It's just overpriced shit, basically, in my opinion. Especially the minis. God, I've got to review the minis, and um, that's not going to be a good review. Um, apparently the company only employs the most qualified Cuban master blenders from what I'm reading a little bit of bitterness in that intake it does seem to mention a lot about the unparalleled construction I have seen better construction but then again I've not seen much better construction it's so it's definitely towards the up end it's not perfect construction I mean there are a decent amount of veins I mean it's not doing too bad for veins especially for such, um, a cheap cigar it's not a big premium price cigar by all means but the quality you would expect from a premium cigar so that's very good also let to move that over there Very nice looking cigar, um, this one in particular, but they seem to be saying that about other cigars. I 
Ah, they tend to have Nicaraguan wrappers. When I say they tend to, I mean that's just um, I've just had a look at a bit of a bit of a list, and they seem to be mostly, especially the Maduro Nicaraguan. But there's I'll have a look on this page. Let's have a look more specifically at the Maduros. In my opinion, minis don't burn too hot, but you have to get this fifth mini. If you watch my scarf 2015, have a look at my top rough rolled cigar and mini cigar. Because I tend to find with the well, the generic minis, of course, they burn way too hot. They're very um, just you know, quick smoke, pick up and smoke them. With the more Cuban type of minis, like um, oh, well, I say Cuban, I mean like they look hand rolled, but they really aren't. It's kind of hard to describe without showing you one. Of course, these are David Off minis. Got these on hand. Got loads of different of these type of minis. I also forgot to mention someone said um, in my chat, minis burn too hot, apparently, in their opinion. Kind of agree with that with generic minis, but with this kind, it seems to like focusing on my hand, but not the scar I'm holding. Mate. There we go. It's, um,. These aren't too bad. They burn not too bad. They burn a lot slower than the generic scars. They're quite a bit better. But I would suggest the slightly tighter part, the, be the bit better. This was my mini scar of the year. The La Paz Mini Wild. They just so, they just taste so excellent, and they they burn very slowly. Surprisingly, I've had these last upwards of twenty minutes. For mini cigars that cost like nothing, they're around about 55p each, it's £11 for a tin of 20 I think. I would suggest those all, like all the time, they do not burn too hot, don't worry about that. I would suggest, you know, at least getting a pack of those to try them. You get them from cigars, but you could also get them from other places, a lot of places. You could also get them from Holland, I believe. Is the, well of course they're, it's a Holland brand. But from... Eastern Europe, you get them quite easily. From examining the ashiness, I think we may have a problem with the wrapper catching up with the cherry. I have reviewed all but two La Paz cigars. I mean, not actually, I've only reviewed two, two La Paz cigars because there's only what, four kinds. There's five kinds, but there's also one of them is Brazilian. And I don't intend on trying that one. But I've had, I've had most of them. Um, the La Paz Mini Wild is the best mini cigar I've ever had, and I would say it's more like a mini cigarillo. La Paz cigarillos, which are basically, well, I should probably mention the cigarros first. The cigarros are the best, just constant cigars. Like I, could, I could happily pick one of those up every day and smoke them. They're very nice, they're non-flavoured, but they're very good tobacco, very sweet tasting. They rival Cubans in terms of taste. And the quality is very high. I'm quite a big fan of the untrimmed ends. Very nice. The cigarillos are between the mini cigars and the cigarros. In terms of size, pretty much the same thing as both. But, you know, just a bit smaller. They cost about a pound each. So, you know, they're still in the middle of the price. Again, I would love to have those all the time. And you buy them in 20 packs of 20 for about £20, £21. You'd also buy the Brazilian cigarillos for the same price. I think it's a pound more or something. Then there's La Paz Gran Corona, which is a bit different than a normal La Paz tobacco. It seems to be more generic Dutch. But it's um, pretty good. I would recommend the Paz brand to anyone. The Grand Corona is quite nice. I've had one of those. I sent one of those to RJ. And I've got another one for review. Definitely the wrapper's not going to... The wrapper's way behind the cherry. It's not going to do anything. I could fix this as much. But since people 
seem to like the novice way of uh, toasting it. Thing with the scars, you're supposed to at least enjoy it. I don't believe toasting really adds to the experience. It definitely doesn't, in my opinion. If you like it properly, then you're fine. That's way too much of a flame. I'm not actually trying to toast this scar here, since it's already pre-lit, of course. I'm just trying to get the wrapper down just the tiniest bit. Get quite a large cherry developing on the end. Should fix most of the uh, burning issues I'm currently having. No need for a real light. I'm just doing this, that uh, bit of it. I'm not even holding the button down. Okay. Oh yeah, it's definitely a lot better. Everyone has decided to start streaming at this time. A lot of people watching Twitch TV have started to stream, so I can't go and watch them because I'm currently streaming myself. I quite like to stream. If people want to see more of these, and they can just ask. I mean, I try and do these every so often. Currently a couple times per week, pretty happy with that. I also stream on twitch.tv because I, you know, do a lot of games, so. Bit of the old ash overdoing it there. Turns are packed. I mean, it's still quite solid around here, roughly. Definitely a bit better in a setting than that. In terms of tightness, definitely towards medium to hard. Of course, with this being a Majoro scar and a little bit on the spicier side than you'd expect, I would probably recommend people who like cigars with, for maybe like um, medium strength cheeks. Um, and it's kind of hard to say, there's a very strong mix of, you know, like uh, sweeter flavours, definitely the nutty flavour, definitely a lot of earthiness in there. A uh, tiny bit of bitterness seems to come up with a bit of a time. Every, every now and then I've had. So so far again, it's uh, pretty nice. It's not the uh, it's not smooth all the way through. It's still very nice. And I've just lost a page. I was looking up school. <laughs> Specifically, Christophe Maduro cigars. They can a well aged blend of Dominican and Cuban seed Nicaraguan tobaccos. That explains so much. Of course, you've got a. Now you smooth this, I can actually see myself. Of course, you do have the hit and miss of the Dominican. It's Cuban seed Nicaraguan tobaccos. Of course, it's. um. Typical types of Cuban. I guess that's a bit of the hint. I'm being kind of a little bit of Cuban through the smell and a little bit in the taste. Um, and the Nicaraguan tobacco definitely does definitely does um, crop up quite a bit in that. That's probably explaining the bitterness. Dog Ollie Brazilian Maduro wrapper. Brazilian I quite like. I've not had too much in the way of Brazilian, but they're okay. Pigtail caps and shaggy feet. To be honest, I, f I find that to be very nice. I like the pigtail caps and the feet. Uh, if you watch my La Paz videos, you know I, I love the rough feet on them. Meaning body smoke with undertones of earth and licorice. 
nutty spice and sweet finish. I would agree with that. In terms of the licorice taste, I've had cigars that definitely have a stronger hint of that. This, not really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't include that. Someone asked, do you watch Brian Glynn from Cigar Obsession? Never heard of either of those, my friend. Embody the taste of richness sought by the true aficionado. Richness, um, yeah, I would say they're so rich in flavour. But... I guess that pretty much explains everything I've uh, picked up from the cigar. I think this might be one of my longer videos. Um, on that note of YouTube channels about cigars, I am subscribed to a few on my Cigar Hub channel. Um, let's just look at the more the ones that I posted recently. RJ the Smoker, of course, cigarettes. A guy called Riyat Taul, or Wyatt, I don't know how to pronounce Wyatt, it's the one name I've never learned how to pronounce, you see it all the time on the internet. I believe he told me once that, did he? No he didn't, it wasn't him. Or was it him? Uh, yeah, I just came across his channel once, he has 30 subscribers. He's posted for a lot longer than I have, and he posts a decent amount of videos. He smokes a lot of good cigars. He has a lot of vlogs, and I watch all his videos. Uh, I'll link his channel in the description, actually. Wyatt Till 2. I think his channel's quite nice, and I think a lot of people should watch it. If you like long update videos, a bit like mine. So, uh, I guess my viewers will like that. Whoa, what the hell's going on here? This wrapper is not staying lit at all. To avoid watching my own videos. I have no idea how I came across this channel actually. Um, I'm just doing a quick investigation, look for comments. on other videos and I don't see where I thought I knew him from but yeah he does um, cigars he does cigar vlogs now from his past few videos then Nick the Smoker, Nick B on YouTube he does cigarette reviews um, and some stuff about that I've subscribed to him for a little bit not too long I like his videos so good then there's Marky Marks who is Mark something else, I don't remember, I'm not going to say his last name, because I've got him on Skype actually. Um, yeah, he has 14 subscribers, and he's a common watcher of my videos. So I'm, I've been subscribed to him for quite a while. He just shows some basic scars, which is, you know, kind of good quick videos. Quite interesting, I'll link him in the description. Um, one person I need to unsubscribe to is a guy called Honest Cigar Reviews, because when I say honest, not really honest. Uh, kind of a bit annoying, don't really like him. Not too honest. Uh, when I said don't really like him, I mean don't really like his videos and just not interested, <laughs> not insulting as a person. Then there's Carl Pearson, he has quite a bit more subscribers, he has 1087, and he does shorter reviews of better cigars, 
So if you don't like the long scar uh, videos I do, he's probably the person you're going to be ended up subscribed to in the end. His videos 10 to, 4, 10 to 15 minutes by the looks of it. I've watched quite a few. And uh, he reviews a lot of cigars, lots of good quality ones, lots of decent sized ones. Nothing really cheap. Always interesting to watch. He's quite frequent with his videos, so he's not uploaded any in a while. I also watch um, Churchill Cigar, who does 739 subscribers. He's, um, what does he do? He doesn't do cigars, does he? Um, I've watched a lot of his videos recently, but he's not uploaded that many, so um, since I subscribed to him, I've seen like maybe about 20 of his videos. It's mostly just cigarettes from him. So I don't know why he's called Churchill Cigar. Um, that's the problem with these um, people, once you get a lot of videos, about 10-15 minutes, you tend not to find the time to just go and watch at least 50 of someone else's videos, so uh, sorry if I don't really know much about other people's channels. Even though I subscribe to them, I do watch every video they upload to so subscribe to them, but I tend not to backtrack much. That seems to be all the recent people I like to mention. Uh, I don't think I can mention that channel, I think he's trying to stay hidden still. Yeah, I'm just subscribed to the same people, just a few. There's also um, a lot of small channels I tend to like to subscribe to, but they don't tend to update really at all. Oh, the JR Sig reviews. He really does not upload often. I think his last upload was a month ago. Uh, I don't think. Apparently, he lives quite close to me, like um, 60 miles or something. He apparently lives. I don't remember the name of the place, but I remember it's like slightly west of Aberdeen, which is a city like 60 miles north of me. So I don't like to subscribe to many of the bigger channels. I tend not to. Um, but yeah, like people like RJ really help me out with that. So in all honesty, I do prefer my style. The only problem is since um everyone's got their hobby time, they like to do what they do in their hobby time. And what I do in my hobby time is make the videos, so it doesn't really take you know, it takes uh, kind of a bit of extra time to find time to actually, you know, watch other people's very lengthy videos. So I tend to when I can, but I don't have that much time, so sorry if I miss any good channels. Of course, using the lighter, the peasant method. To be honest, I prefer, you could just easily toast it like this. If it's long enough, you know, you did plus one all, but this is uh, getting a bit short. If you haven't noticed, I've got a big nose, so if I uh, like too close to my face, it does get in a bit of a problem. Lighter seems to hopefully stay lit well now. The lighter, the um, the foot. Oh, that was a bad bear taste. It's um, that's not by burning though. That's. That's a horse tobacco taste. That's getting quite interesting. Although I'm probably suspecting that's because of the wrapper. With the wrapper being quite a bit, you know, with it being a Maduro wrapper, that's probably where the spice and everything's coming from mainly. That, since I, you know, just tried to let to get that lit again, that's probably where most of the smoke came from, so.
There's a guy that's got over 100,000 subscribers, I think it's Dan Smoker or something. Just not a big fan of his videos. I don't mind cigarettes, um, I did smoke for a bit but I don't really, um, it's not something I'm addicted to, I, I don't really get addicted to things. Um, there's a lot of enjoyment in the scars, especially the long time of course. What the hell was I going to do? I was going to look something up. Oh yeah, Twitch. I just can't give the name Buster Crimes. <laughs> that, that, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. What what time is it for you? Are you in the UK? Or are you in Africa or something? I could have picked a better choice than Africa. Oh, vape man. <laughs> if you want to be gay, vape. I cannot say that on video actually, and shit, I just did. Um, I don't mean like that, I mean, um, vaping is a generally good concept. Oh, Liverpool, that explains a lot. <laughs> oh man, I really need to stop insulting people. Um, but I mean, vaping went from people trying to stop smoking to a bunch of kids being little pricks with vaping. It's just all you can really say with it. People doing it for swag and shit like me. Like me, they're supposed to stop people from smoking. I used to work for an electronic cigarette company and I got so much for free. And yeah, I didn't mind it. But it was just something I just, because of all the annoying kids and I would look like a real prick if I started vaping not to stop, not to stop cigarettes. So I just decided not to just do much about that. But I know quite a lot about electronic cigarettes and yeah. I should probably add a disclaimer to my channel. I will offend people eventually. It's um, it's a scholar thing. There's someone I'm apparently subscribed to that I on Twitch that I'm not. Okay then. Yeah, I saw your comment. Again, Nicaraguan. I just couldn't put that price in a cigar that's Nicaraguan. I did once, actually. That's uh, Red Bull. <laughs> this cigar is lasting a really extremely long time. So far an hour and ten minutes, maybe an hour ten in this, before I just, you know, nah. With these cigars I tend to like to get to maybe the last inch, I could probably, you know, happily leave it there. The last bit tends to get very bitter and too hot. Um, as um, something I've probably mentioned with cigar ends, some could be very good. Some sweet cigars tend to have most of the, well, in general cigars tend to have most of the flavour Right at the very end you get a massive hit of it basically. And with sweet cigars that's very good. You're at the end of your cigar so it's kind of annoying that you get this very good flavour now. But when it comes to bitter cigars, you tend to it just gets really bitter and the best thing to do is just put it down and leave it there if you've had a good cigar, so just leave it. And having that last bit will just ruin it for you.
I was probably thinking of getting a Balmer roll to review next, but um, with the whole thing of me cutting scars down, uh, it's going to be kind of annoying. I sort of had to spend a lot of money, like it's going to be 250 for a new sofa bed, plus uh, 150 for a new desk, and that's like 400 straight off the bat. So. This thing's not really keeping ashes anymore, that's probably part of the reason behind things. I tend to like to have explanations of why things are happening. Yeah, I tend to find that. I mean, I used to spend like nothing on scars because I would always just go to the shop, buy whatever, like at most I would have a five pound cigar as a decent one. I would spend, there's like one shop here that, you here there's absolutely no shops, population 150,000, tobacconist none. There's one news agent here that sells a few cigars for ridiculously overpriced amounts. Occasionally I would have one of those. I mean, there are okay cigars, but just Jesus. And I never used to spend too much, but then... I really wanted to export cigars and I spent a hundred in a month and I thought that was insane and I think in total last month I must have gotten about 500 pounds of cigars and um, yeah no, no one just fucking no. So I've cut down to two cigars, uh, about two cigars a week is what I'm probably hoping for as a maximum, maybe one cigar a week. Of course I did get my box of Regis Coronas, which I'm going to have one every two weeks, because I just sort of have this idea I'm going to have uh, one every two weeks, I might cut it down to one every week, but I'm going to have a buy box of Scars Christmas every year, and then every time I have one I'm going to make an update video or whatnot. Well, I mean, most of the times I have them. So I want to keep this a fairly regular channel, I've got a lot, I've got time to make it. With college, I've actually got less um, semesters or half a year. So I've got. Um, what am I even on about? I've just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, um, semesters, you get two of them every year. Each semester is half a year. Last semester, when I started this video, I had three days a week. Well, two and a half days a week, and now I've only got two days a week. But it's nine to five, so those days I probably won't be making videos. Um, but that still gives me, you know, half the week free. And I do a lot of uh, web design still. Well, not really web design, but I do a few online jobs, why not? I'm annoyed that I'm going to uh, share on me right now. So work out how long I've been doing this. It's been like an hour and twenty minutes. Hour and a half? No, not an hour and a half, hour twenty maybe. I like the long videos because why would I make a non relaxed video? It's it's a cigar. Like making a non relaxed video would just defeat the point of it. That's why I make the videos like I do.
I'm not gonna make videos as if I'm on crack or something, so. I'm definitely trying to improve the videos, and I think this is probably the best it's gonna be for quite a while. Still doing okay. Flavor wise, a bit towards the better side. Getting smoke in your eyes is probably the worst thing though. I mean, in terms of video quality, uh, this is probably one of the best I'm probably going to get. I prefer instead of actually just getting a proper camera and whatnot, this, uh, this is the Logitech C920. Since I like to do live streams, this is the best thing for live streams, especially on Twitch, where you know you keep the camera kind of small. It's not the full focus. Uh, making videos like this, you know, still very good. 1080p, it does very good frame rate wise. Uh, the thing I might change is probably the microphone. There's a lot of things you could do to improve it. This thing's still quite cheap in terms of microphone school, but it's quite comparable to the Blue Yeti, so which is quite an expensive one, so it's very good. Is that what you studied at uni? Uh, for these videos, I'd probably, um, I'd probably be better off if I set up a, a thing for my live stream. You know, just like a small chat box here that would show what's happening in the live stream chat. I could probably actually set that up now. Copy to you. Is uh, mono capture. This sub region, slide region. Oops, wrong mono. Mono T. Yeah, this might be, make it a bit easier to see for the video. Uh, hit it scene. There we go. That probably obscures a bit too much, actually. Hit it scene, put it over there. Move this over here. Yeah, I think that works. I think people can see that in about 360p or not. Sold in Asia and Tesco. I believe you mean Asda. Uh, yeah, I know quite a bit about the generic <laughs> uh, cigarettes that Tesco and as the cell. Uh, if you go to the web link I just posted, then you'll uh, basically Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, whatnot. Those are the scars that they will sell you over the counter, and they tend to always have them. <laughs> Sold in Asia, that's a good one. 
Um, yeah, lots of um, you'll find other mini scars and stuff there, but you also find um, in terms of bigger scars they sell, like more generic ones. They the Henry Wintermans Corona, I believe, is one you might want to look into. They don't sell too many in terms of uh, bigger scars. I know Asda sell the Henry Wintermans Shoot Corona. That's burned so incredibly small. So uh, sorry I've only got the chat set up there, but um, I'm going to keep live streaming for a bit. But I'm going to stop recording this because I'm going to end the cigar. Decent chunk left, but it's going to get a bit towards the better side. So this is going to be an interesting sort of experiment type of thing. Not experiment. I keep mixing up my words. Back to web wrong one. Webcam one. Uh, so this is um the Christoph Maduro Robusto. Very very good score overall. I would say for the price it's very cheap. Uh, if you're in the US of course all the scars tend to be cheap and in Europe as well the taxes aren't so bad. Uh, you pay this up for about £6, very good. I would strongly suggest picking this one up if you want to. It does have the bit of the extra, you know, a bit of the extra stronger taste. It's not uh, overall very sweet and fantastic, but it's uh, quite a good smoke, very good long smoke. Probably a bit longer. The burn time is probably not. Uh, I don't know. I would say it's pretty nice burn time, actually. An hour and about an hour and a half ago of that could probably get longer. Mostly nutty throughout. Good um sort of underlying sweet taste, but of course the wrapper is quite better, so yeah. It's a good scar. Thank you for sending me that RJ and thanks for watching this video. All links I mentioned are probably gonna be in the description. If I haven't, let me know in the comments, I'll update it. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.